Hello, welcome to Until Ministries. Thank you for joining us. We're so glad that you're with us. Well, today we're going to be continuing in our um, half verse by half verse study of Psalm 23, The Lord is My Shepherd. And the reason that we're spending so much time and going into such detail on this passage in this series is because it's one of the most beloved and one of the most well-known portions of scripture that we see, um, but a lot of people, even those that have memorized it as a child, a lot of us have not taken the time to say, what does the language really mean? What is the psalmist, uh, King David, uh, what is he writing under the power of the Holy Spirit? Because that's where scripture comes from. What is he trying to get us to understand that we can apply to our lives as we walk with the Good Shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's get right into it. Um, we have, as we've been doing in this series, uh, the verse that we're looking at today is, is Psalm 23, 5b, uh, meaning the second part of Psalm 23 and verse 5. And it's the, it's the verse that many of you remember memorizing as, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. And I'm just going to, as we've been doing in this series, read you some other credible translations of, of this passage so that you can get the full meaning of what the language has to say. Here's another one. You bathe my head in oil, my cup is so full it spills over. You drench my head with oil, my cup is overflowing. You pour oil of blessing on my head. You give me more than I can hold. I like that one. You give me more than I can hold, Lord. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. And then this last one is more of a, uh, it's not a literal translation. It's more of an expansion on the original language. And it says this. It says, you care for all my needs anointing my head with soothing, fragrant oil, filling my cup again and again with your grace. So I hope those are helpful to you, and we'll get now into our main premise today is that just as the shepherd, the, the literal shepherd, anoints the heads of his sheep as an anecdote for troubles of various kinds, so our good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, has anointed us with his Holy Spirit in at least three problem areas, three important problem areas. So today we're going to look at his anointing uh, us with oil against irritation, uh, anointing with oil against infection, and anointing with oil against internal strife. You've heard me say many times on the program that when I preach, I'm preaching at myself. And if any of it is applicable to you or useful to you, that's all the better. Well, today, uh, I'm really preaching at myself because I can keep getting hit right between the eyes uh, because I have many of the issues here that the Lord's trying to get me through with the power of his Holy Spirit anointing me with oil. You'll see what I mean as we go along, but this one, uh, if you feel like I'm preaching at you, I'm not. I'm preaching at me because this is very applicable to me. So anointing with oil against irritation. For, for the literal sheep, there are all types of, of flies and gnats and mosquitoes and parasites. Remember last time we talked about we talked about that rich table land that where you prepare a table for before me in the presence of mine enemies. And it was things were looking really good, high and lush and well watered table lands. Well, just when things look good, then you have the flies and the gnats and the mosquitoes, and it drives the sheep to distraction. It's irritation. The key word here is irritation. That the good shepherd anoints the sheep 
with oil in response to these kinds of irritation. In the case of the literal sheep, the flies, the gnats, the mosquitoes, it drives the sheep to distraction. It causes erratic behavior. So what does the shepherd do about this? Well, he applies linseed oil mixed with sulfur and tar, not a very pretty picture, and it's smeared on the head of the sheep and especially on the nose, and it gets rid of the aggravation because the flies and mosquitoes and gnats want no part of this mixture. So they stay away. So the aggravation's gone, the irritability and the restlessness is gone, but here's the thing, repeated application is necessary. It's not a one-time shot where the shepherd applies this gunky mixture and then there will never be a parasite around again. No, that's not the way it works. It has to be repeated. So now let's make an application to us as, remember the Bible says we are the sheep of his pasture and the Bible says that the Lord Jesus is our good shepherd. And so how does this apply to us as his sheep? Well, Sort of the irritations that you and I face, and I'm again speaking to myself, they can be flies in the ointment, so to speak. Sometimes just when things are good, maybe there's been spiritual progress in our life uh, or something else good happening in our lives. All of a sudden there's these petty, I call them petty annoyances, petty annoyances, and they're distractions and they may be frustrating and in my case, and I'll be the first to admit this, as I get hit between the eyes with the word of God here, that sometimes that causes me to lose my temper. It, it causes me to have a, mil, a mini tantrum or a mini meltdown of some sort. Um, and uh, and it, it's frustrating. It, it leads to this kind of frustration and anger and tantrums. And, and these little petty annoyances in, in my life, uh, electronics are one of the main ones. And uh, even this morning, we've had uh, annoyances with electronics. And uh, sometimes our annoyances were little things that people do that annoy us or, or little problems, things that don't work out. And they drive me nuts. Um, and so there's a, we need that continuous anointing of God's spirit, just like the, the literal sheep need that uh, repeated application of the oil. So you and I need that continuous anointing of God's spirit to counteract these uh, frustrations, to help us. They're not going to go away, but... These, the anointing of the Holy Spirit helps us to get through them without the temp temper, without the tantrums, without the frustration, without the I give ups, all the things that sometimes I do and perhaps you do as well. So if we allow God's Spirit to counteract these things, in other words, when an, an irritation comes up, um, then our first response should be not to react with an anger, not to react with frustration, not to react with, um, you know, losing it, but rather to turn to the Holy Spirit and ask for his help to get us through these aggravations, to give us quietness, to give us calm, to give us joy and peace and patience and contentment and gentleness, despite these irritations, which are real, and they, they are up in our face and they get us upset, but we need to realize that the Holy Spirit can give us calmness and joy and patience and contentment uh, instead of temper and frustration. And believe me, I'm not exaggerating. I struggle with this multiple times a day, and um, I'm really um, committing myself to allowing the Holy Spirit to totally control me so that when I get these things, I will not react with anger or frustration or many tantrums, but I'll react with calmness and peace, knowing that he's in control, knowing that he's got this. It's like the Holy Spirit saying, hey, Bill, I've got this. Don't get all upset. Don't get all in a tither. 
I've got this. So uh, a, a prayer that I've been praying a lot lately since I've been working on this uh, particular passage and uh, I'm sure it will be helpful to you is, Lord, please apply the precious oil of the Holy Spirit to me during aggravations, uh, during petty annoyances. Most of you know I'm a collector of classic cars. Well, when you have cars that are 50, 60, 70 years old, there are a lot of petty annoyances, I can tell you, of things that go wrong, and you can't, you can't blame the cars, they're that old. But uh, any kind of annoyances in our life or frustrations, whether it's with our cell phone or our computer or an appliance or an automobile or other people, whatever it is that are these irritations in our life, we have to ask for the power of the Holy Spirit that we would be anointed with him, that our shepherd, the Lord Jesus, would anoint us with the oil of the Spirit so that we can react to these things with peace, with calmness, and even with joy rather than frustration or aggravation. I hope that's helpful to you. It sure is to me if I can incorporate it. Well, that's a little bit about anointing with oil against irritation. The second is anointing with oil against infection. Infection. And I think you'll find this part very interesting as well, especially the application we're going to make. Um, for sheep, one of the most feared things is a, an infection called scab. And that's a highly contagious skin disease. And it's caused by a, a microscopic parasite. And it's spread by direct contact. So when the sheep rub heads, which they do a lot, that's how this scab, this, this infectious disease, highly contagious, that's how it's spread. And so the only antidote, and this is, all, this is written by Philip Keller uh, in his book called A Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm. He was an actual shepherd in the Middle East, and he, um, he knows his stuff as far as the sheep's concerned. So that what happens is the sheep have to have their heads anointed with oil because that's the only anecdote against this contagious skin disease. And the shepherd may anoint the head by hand or may build what they call dips so the head can be dipped without harm to the sheep so that the oil can help heal the skin disease. And because it's contagious, the coating of oil can help prevent its spread. So you say, well, what does that all have to do with us? Well, I'd like to suggest that there's infection and contamination of sin and evil from the world, which is highly contagious, and it defiles our minds. It defiles our minds. There's so much stuff, and all of you can relate to this, there's so much stuff out there pouring into us whether it be internet, whether it be television, whether it be radio, whether it be other people. Uh, there's a lot of voices out there, and a lot of the voices are evil. And our minds get defiled, and our minds can get, def they can get infected or contaminated with the sin and evil from the world. You can see it already if, if, if you're somewhere near my age or even less, if you're a mature person, a senior citizen of some age, you know that some of the things that would absolutely be overwhelmingly appalling and knock people off of their, right off of their opinions uh, when we were young years ago, today no one even gives a thought. It's just accepted. Uh, uh, things that are evil are just gone along with. Nobody, oh, uh, that, that happens, you know. That's the way that things have happened. So we have to remember that this infection of the mind, just like the scabs we were talking about for the literal sheep, it's spread by direct contact. 
it's spread by rubbing heads, if you will, and we're speaking analytically now, uh, by rubbing heads. In other words, our thoughts are shaped, our emotions are shaped, our desires are shaped um, through exposure to the mind of others. And this can cause us even to make choices that have been put into our minds or thoughts or emotions or desires by others. That's why it's so important to get regular fellowship with people who are walking closely with Christ, people that are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit so that our minds are stayed on the word of God and are not affected by uh, others that, that may be representing evil. So there's subtle pressures of internet and television and radio and magazines and, and the news and your peers and movies and books. And uh, the, these things are just not Christ-like. So we have to take a stance and we have to realize that our heads, our spiritual heads need to be anointed again with the power of the Holy Spirit so that our minds can be kept on the Lord. Uh, the Bible says that um, if, if we want true peace in our lives, our minds have to be stayed or fixed or focused on him. Um, that's in the book of Isaiah. So the, that verse says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose eyes are stayed or focused on you. So uh, can contamination, mental contamination, spiritual infection, if you will, violence, hatred, greed, immorality, all these things are floating around out there and they're highly contagious. And that's why we need the Good Shepherd. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ in a personal way, if there's been a time in your life when you've asked him to come into your heart, to forgive your sin and to be your Lord and Savior, then you have the Christ in your life and you have the precious Holy Spirit of God indwelling you. And when we ask for our Good Shepherd to apply that uh, precious Holy Spirit uh, oil, if you will, to our lives, then we can be conscious daily and hourly of purging um, we can, we can experience what I'll call the purging presence of God's Spirit applied to our mind. In other words, the Holy Spirit of God, who is represented by the oil in this passage and throughout Scripture, oil is frequently a picture of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, um, His presence will purge the evil out of our minds. He, he will cleanse our minds. And when when he is applied, the oil of the Holy Spirit is applied to our minds, that, that purging presence of God's Spirit will help us to be conscious daily of what we should avoid. So we should invite the Holy Spirit of God. Listen to this now. This is very important. Invite the Holy Spirit of God to monitor your thought life as I need to have the Holy Spirit of God monitor my thought life. Why is that? Because stop and think about it. If a deed frequently begins with a thought, doesn't it? We think about doing something and then we do it. Well, if that thing is evil, that thought is evil, that turns into an evil deed, doesn't it? And that can turn into an evil habit. And that can turn into an evil character, and an evil destiny. So it's important to nip it in the bud. Um, so we ask the Holy Spirit of God. We ask the Lord Jesus, who is our good shepherd, who hopefully you've asked into your life. We say, good shepherd, precious shepherd, Lord Jesus Christ, please send your Holy Spirit to monitor my thought life. Remember the Holy Spirit's living inside of us. So the Holy Spirit will come and he will monitor our thought life if we turn it over to him, if we ask him to. Um, he will sift the input through the word of God. So sometimes we struggle, um, sometimes we resist, just like sheep do. 
we struggle and the, the sheep struggle and resist what is best for them in favor of something that they might desire. So we as humans sometimes desire something that's wrong, it's evil, it's not God's plan for us, and yet we struggle to resist it. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. He lives in our hearts if we know Christ as Savior. Let him spring up within you and monitor your thought life because the thought comes before a deed. Nip it in the bud before it becomes a deed or a habit or a part of your character. So our prayer could be in this section, Lord, please apply this oil of the Holy Spirit to my mind to fill and to monitor and to control it. That's a great prayer, isn't it? Dear Lord, please apply the oil of the Holy Spirit to my mind to fill my mind, to monitor it, and to control it. Oh, that's what I've been praying since I've been studying this passage so deeply. Well, we have to move on. Um, I'd love to talk more about that one, but now we want to finish up with anointing oil against internal strife. And if you are a churchgoer, uh, if you frequently fellowship with other Christians, which I hope you do, um, this is all important as well. So let's look at, again, as we've been doing, let's look at literal sheep and then we'll apply it to, the, to us as the sheep of the Lord. So in mating season for regular sheep, there's a tremendous rivalry amongst the rams for possession of the hues and their favor. So these guys are macho, right? So these macho rams uh, have this tremendous rivalry um, in, in the mating season, trying to win the favor of, of the females. So um, what the shepherd does, he anoints their head with oil in the sense that he puts grease and oil on the head of the rams so that when they collide you've all seen pictures of rams colliding with one another as they have rivalry so then they will when they collide they'll sort of glance off each other it's for their protection so the oil uh, or the grease that the shepherd applies to the head is so that they will not really hurt each other they'll sort of glance off well what does that have to do with you and with me well simply this there's if if you've been a christian for any length of time if you're involved in a church or you associate with a lot of other christians you'll know that sometimes there's rivalry even in a church sometimes there's division churches divide all the time sometimes there's strife amongst christians Sometimes there's pride. Sometimes there's jealousy. Sometimes there's knocking one another um, or trying to hurt one another. So then there's a rivalry, trying to outdo others. There's wounds. There's hurts. There's battles. There's bickering. I wish this weren't true. I wish I could say that, well, once you come to Christ and you get involved in a Bible-believing, uh, Bible-firmly-centered uh, church, um, that all this stuff goes away, but that's not the case because we're still people and we're still sinners. So there's, there's bickering, there's sometimes self-assertion, there's sometimes petty animosities, and all these cause divisions in the body of Christ, the church. This renders the church uh, ineffective and it hinders growth. Um, and I think all of us have probably witnessed um, churches that have um, become sort of impotent and not growing um, and ineffective because the people are not in harmony in the church. So the answer here is, again, the good shepherd must apply the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's what the oil symbolizes in Psalm 23. Apply the presence of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will bring harmony and peace and unity where once there was uh, rivalry and jealousy and so on. Um, so 
if you recall, as you look into scripture, even amongst the disciples, even amongst Jesus' 12 disciples, there was at times rivalry, there was times disagreement. Um, but when the Holy Spirit came um, at Pentecost, then uh, the church was formed. Um, as long as they were following the Holy Spirit, there was harmony and growth and unity. But when they didn't, then there, was, there were problems. So here the, the prayer should be, please fill me, Lord, with the oil of the Holy Spirit so I will have long suffering. That means putting up with the other guy. So I will have long suffering. So I will have patience. So I will have forgiveness. So I will have contentment in all my relationships. Did you hear that? So we pray, precious Holy Spirit, uh, the oil of the Holy Spirit. Oh, good shepherd, please apply that oil to our relationships. Help us to have patience. Help us to put up with other people and, and their quirks. And by the way, help them to put up with my quirks and my problems. Um, and uh, help us to grow as a church. Help us to be patient and forgiving and content. And then as we, as we close this out, uh, I want to just concentrate for a moment on the phrase, my cup runneth over or my cup overflows or uh, the cup is more than I can handle some of the translations we talked about. Because if we do this, if we allow the precious uh, Holy Spirit to control our lives, if we ask our good shepherd, the Lord Jesus, to have his spirit just control us, then our cups will overflow with Christ himself because the Holy Spirit always points to Christ. And so when, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, when we are controlled by the Holy Spirit, that's what it means to be filled by the Spirit. It means to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Then we will be more like Jesus and our cup of life will overflow and his Spirit has unlimited benefits and we can give thanks. But we need to remember that there may be suffering as well because remember Jesus suffered tremendously and so did all his followers. But the good news is the Holy Spirit, the oil, will be right there with us sharing the wine and the blood of Christ's suffering as well. But he'll be right there with us and he will uh, give us this overflowing cup of peace and joy and abundance um, that is indicative of him overflowing his blood poured out for us on Calvary. If he poured out his blood on Calvary for us, he will certainly pour out his spirit for our spiritual growth. So the cup of our life can overflow with his life. And even during a storm, we will find the benefit and we will be blessings to others if we let the cup of our life through the Holy Spirit overflow even during the storms and all the adversities. So for the irritations and the infections and the eternal internal strife of our lives and our churches, we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need to pray for his presence. We need to pray for his help with these little frustrations in our own lives and in our church and in our relationships. We need to ask him to control our mind and our behavior. We need to ask him to help breed humility and harmony and peace in our lives. And then truly our cup will be running over. Our cup will be overflowing more than we can handle. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you for listening and God bless you. The Lamb is the light in the city of gold. The light of the world is Jesus. Oh yes, come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see.
心。